We are here in Medjugorje next to St. James Church in the restaurant Craze. And I'm Bis. What's your name? My name is Neil. Where are you from, Neil? I am originally from India, but I live in Dubai. In Dubai? Wow. Yes. Uh -huh. And you? My name is Tripti Shantel, even I'm from India and I live in Dubai. Uh -huh. And you're a married couple, no? No, uh, we are good friends. You're good friends, yeah. good. <laughs> and my um, husband is working, so I made the trip with my friend. Good, beautiful. And um, when did you hear the first time about Medjugorje in your life? Uh, actually, recently. Speak loud. Very, very recently, yeah. uh, the, my friend Neil told me about it and mm -hmm. I said, okay, we can go try it out because when I read about it, it was quite fascinating mm -hmm. and apparently over you get millions of millions of people come here every year yeah so and especially from India as well mm -hmm. right? and so we said okay it's close to Dubai we will go ahead and see and mm -hmm. to be honest it's been a very peaceful experience mm -hmm. I know people usually say when you go at the hill you usually see Mother Mary's mm -hmm. I experienced it mm -hmm. or maybe this I, I don't know but for me it was the most peaceful thing that happened I saw an image mm -hmm. and I think it was more to do with when you have faith it yeah. kind of comes true. You said you saw an image? I saw an image in the in the cloud, yeah. Wow. I was uh -huh. the image of Mother Mary, Jesus, and yeah. even angels and it was everything in the cloud and I was telling him uh -huh. and I couldn't stop crying because it was just just sometimes you feel like it's impossible but uh -huh. yeah it is true. They say miracles do happen. Yeah. Wow, unbelievable. That was on Apparition Hill? Or Apparition. 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 It's especially, huh? Yes. And how was the experience for you there, walking up the rocky road? The Ooh, way? <laughs> that was something that I wasn't aware of. So, but yeah, it, it was a bit difficult because, huh. you know, the rocks, it was rocks and not proper stairs. But yes, we, we did make it. Uh -huh. And um, even in the church this morning, it was a different experience for the English Mass. Mm -hmm. And there is a father from India and we asked him for a blessing. and. When he was blessing me, he said, stay strong, you're a very strong woman, because he knew that something mm -hmm. that I was praying for, yeah. and it was, it just, he, was, he just said exact words, what mm. I wanted to hear. Charismatic priest, no? Yes. Unbelievable. Really? Holy Spirit <laughs> walk, talking through him, no? Huh? Yes. Uh -huh. and, and, and for you, how is the experience for you to be here? So for me, the experience was really, really nice. Uh, I didn't know what to expect coming in. I heard about it probably like five years back when my friends used to come uh -huh. and they would come every year and I would be like, oh, okay, one year I'm going to go and I'll come. And then this year, for some odd reason, it happened to be the year that I chose to come and uh, plans were not happening and all of a sudden it happened. So I was like, okay, here uh, we are. Yeah. And I think this was just an invitation from Mother Mary, as you say, mm -hmm. um, to come visit her and to see uh, and receive her blessings. And I think that was what it was. I think we all have been going through so much over the year with COVID, with all the struggles that everybody has been facing. And I think this was just a moment to come mm -hmm. and be blessed and to know that no matter what you're going through, you're always taken care of. Yeah. Beautiful. You pray the rosary? Yes, I do. Why? Uh, there is something about the rosary that I connect and I feel like the Lord talks through the rosary and through prayers and through just that simple silence and meditation that you feel that the Lord is with you no matter what you're going through. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. And you have always been Catholic or you have a... I've well, always been Catholic. Uh -huh. yeah, born and raised. Born and raised. Gone to a Catholic school as well. So. Wow. Yeah. And um, what is the beauty of the Catholic faith for people who don't know the Catholic faith? What would you tell them? Why are you Catholic? Um, sometimes it's not what you see mm -hmm. it's sometimes not seeing and believing it's what the Catholic faith has taught me it's just about um, always been taken care of it doesn't matter if you haven't seen the Lord you haven't seen Jesus you haven't seen Mother Mary but everything about it is just there in fact most recently somebody introduced me to this um, uh, series called The Chosen mm -hmm. and when I watched The Chosen I was like Oh, Jesus is just like us. Everything from the humility, from the humor, from everything that he's gone through. I think he's just like one of us. And that is why we feel connected because mm. it's not something supernatural. It is just how nature was designed to be. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And for you, the Catholic faith. So I Take was, the microphone. Oh, sorry. Yes. Yeah. I was born Hindu uh -huh. and I oh. did convert in 2006, but it was due to my faith. Uh -huh. I had a lot of Christian neighbors and that's how I started going to church with them yeah. and slowly slowly my faith built up uh -huh. and uh, yeah in 2006 I didn't make the decision yeah and 
luckily my my family supported me with that basically yeah. it's up to you it's your faith uh-huh. go ahead and i believe that every religion is the same uh-huh. so for me i had a lot of experience in india we have uh, mother mary's church which is called mahim church mm-hmm. so going there i i did see miracles happen in my life mm-hmm. i'm really thankful and grateful to mother mary mm-hmm. and yeah so that's why i said okay it's unbelievable place where mother mary was re- really appeared and i really want to go and pray and see and like i said before it was it was a amazing um, experience for me is the, the cloud now yes and um, what made you change to be catholic there must be something have had had happened to you no in a certain way like it, it was just because even my mom in india we all follow all religions we, we live together so mm-hmm. in especially city of mumbai mm-hmm. so my mom used to go to church and i used to go with her at times mm-hmm. so but she was a hindu you said or yeah she's hindu but she went to the church so catholic hindu, church yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but she never said like you know you can't go to church. It is the faith that matters. And till mm-hmm. date, she does read her Mother Mary's uh, books, the novenas, everything. Mm-hmm. She does still does that. Mm-hmm. And she always taught us like you know, as far as you have faith in anything, just believe it. Mm-hmm. Because end of it, everybody is same. Every religion is same. Mm-hmm. So for me, but what changed? Something support, changed. Yeah. Family support was the most important because mm-hmm. India is not. I wouldn't say every family is very uh, supportive when you say oh I'm going to change my religion and I'm going to mm-hmm. take and take up another religion but mm-hmm. li- like I said touch with my family was very supporting mm-hmm. till they they are So you did you did all the catechism yes, all I did catechism I but it was holy communion down 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 the whole the whole process But I did I did know my prayers beforehand so uh-huh, it was an easy process for me and even the nuns said the same thing that okay You know what? You 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 really know the prayer, so you don't have to go through a lot, mm-hmm. like catechism classes and everything. Because mm-hmm. and thanks to my neighbors, I think they also always took me to church with them. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I didn't take the Holy Communion till I got baptized. Yeah, but beautiful. it was always there in my mind, like, oh, I I really want to try the Holy Communion and mm-hmm. be blessed. Wow. And in 2006, yes, it did happen. And um, congratulations! Thank Welcome you. in the club. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> and um, you pray the Rosary. Why? Again, like you said, it is it is quite peaceful. It is something that you always. I think it every mystery teaches you something. It kind of you relate to the mystery every time you pray the rosary, mm-hmm. and it calms you down. And they always say that the faith is something you get because even though I did not go to a Catholic school, I have a lot of Catholic friends, and their parents always used to say. Evening time, seven o'clock in India. It's a very common thing. You say your rosaries, and I used to join them. Uh-huh. That's how I started getting into the habit of saying the rosary uh-huh. and understanding what the meaning of the rosary is. Uh-huh. And wow. I think I have continued doing that. Uh-huh. And a lot of people are kind of surprised, and they always ask me, "What changed your mind? Why did you turn to Christianity?" And but it was just my faith, I would say. And uh-huh. I think the support from my family. <laughs> so you experience something, or yes, like I said, because when I used to, before I got baptized, yeah. when I was in India, I used to go to church every Wednesday because we consider Wednesday to be Mother Mary's Day mm-hmm. in India, and we used to they have novenas, mm-hmm. and I used to attend all the novenas, pray, and I I knew that there were so many things I wanted to achieve. Yeah, and being from an Indian family, a girl traveling, getting out, being independent is not. Very common, mm-hmm. but in my case, I wanted to be, do that, and I achieved it. And I'm thankful to Mother Mary. And I was telling him yesterday. I still remember standing there uh-huh. at the statue in India and praying to Mother Mary, saying, "Give me the strength to be independent." Uh-huh. And yes, that dream has come true. Wow, <laughs> so beautiful! You go to confession? Yes. Why? Because I am not perfect. I would say uh-huh. every year. <laughs> so I, I really. Whatever I do, I I really need to go to confession and ask for forgiveness. And Me too. Yeah, it's beautiful. God is great, and He forgives you uh-huh. no matter what, and and helps you re- realize that you know what that is something different about Christianity as well. Is because you go ask for forgiveness and it's given to you. Yeah. You do your penance. Yes. And it's blessed. beautiful, no? It is. Uh, and. Um, What would you tell people who are like, scared to go to confession? Think like, what will the priest think of me? What would you tell them? I feel, I mean, confession is a way of kind of letting it go because uh-huh. sometimes when you don't confess, you keep it in your heart, and that kind of 
you're just burning inside. Yeah. But if you talk to someone, to be honest, I feel therapy today's time is something mm -hmm. similar to confession. It's just that you go to a therapist mm -hmm. and you talk to a therapist and get out things. So mm -hmm. it's the same thing what the priests do here. You just go confess and ask for forgiveness. The only thing therapists do is obviously you don't ask for forgiveness or you do no, don't do penance, mm -hmm. but it's something in, on the similar line. And you don't have to pay, it's for free. <laughs> <laughs> Is that good? <laughs> oh, I wouldn't say, but obviously you do your penance and uh -huh. I think that's what matters. And, uh -huh. and when it comes to you, I think the Lord, you need to have a big, a big heart as well. It's not about, I mean, it's not about money all the time. It's about how you treat I was people, kidding, how yeah? you yeah? do things without, like Jesus says, without the one hand knowing the other hand, how you go give away things, mm -hmm. materialistic things. So it's small things that matters a lot more than you know, money when it comes to money i think it's, mm -hmm. it's the faith end of it you know you do good good will come back to you wow beautiful and for you how is confession for you so i have a different viewpoint i mean uh -huh. probably she's the one who's preaching to the one who doesn't go confess um, <laughs> i i don't know i feel like after a point like I, after i received confirmation mm -hmm. um i just realized that you know, confession is um, just a time when people go to say the things that they have done or whatever. But I believe like every day mm -hmm. is a confession that you have when you sit at home and you, you pray to God. You just, you know, you confess everything that you've done because the Lord is watching you always and he knows exactly what you're doing and what is in your heart. And sometimes you don't really need, um, it, that's my opinion, sorry, mm -hmm. maybe it's contrary to what everybody believes in the Catholic faith. I believe that you just confess in your heart and the Lord will forgive you and he'll show you the way. Mm -hmm. um, yes, you can go and talk to a priest and that's always good mm -hmm. and great, but when that doesn't happen, because I feel like, as a kid, I always feel like, oh my God, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to lie even more. Mm -hmm. And that always stopped me from going to confession. I was like, I don't want to be a sinner and I don't want to keep lying and I want to be dishonest. So I would just pray and I would be like, Lord, this is what I am. This is what I do. This is how I feel. This is what I think. This is what I've done. And show me the way to not do those again. So beautiful. Wow. Yeah, so and and what would you tell people who are scared to go to confession who think like, what will the, th the priest think of me if I tell him all what I did? Um, I think every day somebody is judging you. Mm -hmm. The Lord is judging you before everybody else and he's seeing you and he knows exactly. And he's not waiting to punish you or to, um, to scold you. That's mm -hmm. what people feel like they're going to be scolded at or the priest is going to be angry at them. I mean, if that is something that you feel easier talking mm -hmm. to a person and healing and getting out things that you have in your heart, then so be it. It's a choice. It's not uh, something that you should be scared of. Mm -hmm. Also, just like me, maybe you can pray in your heart, speak to the Lord, talk to him constantly, tell him everything that you've done. And perhaps, you know, that's another way. Mm, that's also to have a personal relationship with Christ? Yes, indeed. Yeah. And how do you feel his presence? Can you describe how that? Um, so the funny part was, uh, before I started praying every day, because I come from a Catholic family and we used to say the Angelus every day and wow. the Rosary. Uh -huh. um, so we used to say it at sundown. Um, I stopped praying. At some point I would go to church because I felt it was obligatory mm -hmm. and I would go to church. But um, sitting and praying once when I was in a really, really disturbing time, and I opened the book and what the Bible and I read something and mm -hmm. uh, I felt like that was the Lord talking to me and telling me about something that I was going through and how he was there for me and how he was caring for me. Mm -hmm. And I shouldn't worry because I'm not alone. And from that day on moving forward, I felt like every time I looked and I read, there was a communication that the Lord was having with me. Mm -hmm. And I feel blessed and I think he talks to me through that. It's wow. just the... Uh, the safety or the the presence around even if i don't see him i can feel him in my soul and mm. i think that is important wow beautiful and for you this personal relationship how would you describe it uh personal relationship with christ oh, or, yeah. like you said you do when we when i read the bible i do get the messages as well and i've noticed it that especially when when there is something that i'm going through and you just turn you open the bible you read it and it resonates to the situation that you're going through and it's giving, telling you that whatever it is, don't worry, it will just pass. Mm -hmm. It is just a phase and it will pass because after bad things, good things will happen and you kind of calm yourself down. So it, 
it's very very different experience when you're reading the bible and the story resonates with what you are going through or what you think what you were thinking about mm -hmm. so that's a different experience like like i said i do pray in the morning and evening mm -hmm. like my candles so that that's something that helps me be calm helps mm -hmm. me be i think very much like i'm i'm trying to hold my anger or anything whatever i've done i'm asking for forgiveness if i was angry throughout the day and mm -hmm. i know that the lord is there to forgive me so you ask for forgiveness and it is given to you wow beautiful and you said you wanted to have the experience of receiving the holy communion how was the first time and how was it for you it was really really the, the first time it was when i they baptized me yeah. and it was really amazing and yeah. you could feel the power as in when you t when i took the communion i there was something that i felt in my body and I bursted into tears as well. Wow. And it was really a good experience and yeah, and I never looked back after that and my faith has just been stronger and stronger. Stronger and stronger. And for you, Holy Communion. Oh, I, it was a good experience. I mean, we did that as a kid. I think I was in third grade. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, it was just like you were told how to walk. Yes, <laughs> me <behave> too. Yourself. <laughs> don't be naughty, don't cross the line. <laughs> and then it was just the priest when he gave it to you it, it just felt like um, the spirit the Holy Spirit entered into your wow. soul and it felt really magical and we can't wait for the Lord to come his second coming uh -huh. and blessing all of us and saving us from all the troubles and all all the things that the world is going through beautiful yeah. and um, you do adoration in India as well yes we do you go we have um, oh, yeah. I've not gone very often but I do go because my sister goes for it every uh -huh. first Friday yeah so she goes for the uh, holy adoration and I've been with her a couple of times somehow I've never really made a conscious effort to keep going for the adoration but whenever I do I know that it is purely because my faith has taken me there it's mm -hmm. not a compulsion or a, a decision that I need to make in my mind that I have to go and I have to do this but it is that when I go there, I know mm. the Lord has taken me there. Wow, beautiful. And for you, adoration? You have been yesterday night here in Medjugorje? Uh, no, we oh. wanted to go, but then it was a bit too late. Yeah, and yeah. Then by the time... Don't worry. Uh, the adoration, I think... Um, so we went for rosary, but it was in a different language, but uh -huh. we stayed for the rosary. Uh -huh. And then we thought the adoration would be again in a different language. So we said, okay, we will check it out today, if it's possible. Tonight there is veneration of the cross after the mass, 7 o'clock. Try it uh, out, yes, yes, because there's sure, yeah. Melinda playing the violin. I don't oh, know if you yes, experienced yes, that. I saw yes. her in the church, yeah, she's beautiful. Beautiful, no? Beautiful voice. And, and there's, the, there's Roland, the singer, in okay. this, you will see tonight. Right. Because if you leave soon, I would... This is an yes, amazing tomorrow, experience. but today's day we have yeah. just kept for the church. <laughs> That's good. That's, try, try it out. Yeah. And um, adoration, you go in, in Dubai to adoration? Um, or? Uh, is no, I adoration? haven't really uh -huh. been for adoration in Dubai, to yeah. be honest. But yeah. whenever I travel at mm -hmm. home, if I get the chance, that definitely I use that time to go for adoration as well. Mm -hmm. But in Dubai, again, I, I, I shouldn't say this, but mm. I think it's more to do with your work schedule every yeah. time. So, regular life yeah and then earlier it used to be fridays was off and mm -hmm. saturday sunday mm -hmm. uh, usually the mass was on friday and i used to work on friday and i had saturday sunday off so i couldn't mm -hmm. kind of make it but now now the thing has changed weekend has changed it's saturday and sunday and hopefully i'm looking forward to the right. sunday uh -huh. that i can get a chance to go to church and go mm -hmm. for adoration as well and what would you tell people who have not been to Medjugorje? why why should they come once one time here First, it is the most peaceful place mm -hmm. I think I felt is because as compared to Sarajevo because I, I think maybe because we, and we came to Sarajevo for the, for the flight mm -hmm. so for us it was okay we do the city and then we go to Medjugorje mm -hmm. and the whole experience is two different places even though there are churches in Sarajevo we went to churches there mm -hmm. but here there is something there's something a different feel in this place there's, there's something that I, I can't express also, but there is very, it's very peaceful, it's calming you down and it's like, you know, that you don't think or you don't worry about things when you're here. Just feel like, you know, mm -hmm. it's time to just take a breath at a time and not worry about your surroundings and mm -hmm. like the hill, that was the most amazing experience, even though it was a tough walk up, mm -hmm. but when you come to Apparition the statue, yeah. yes, when you come to the statue, you feel, Mother Mary's statue, you just 
you just feel that whole experience is different yeah. and you see so many people there and you see their faith as well mm -hmm. and you feel like yes you know what this, this is something different and although everybody's coming up everyone has a smile on their face everybody is like friendly so that's what matters you think like yes although people are going through so much when they are coming to Mother Mary they know that everything is going to be resolved wow. no matter what. so your favorite place Apparition Hill, Apparition Hill. Yeah. and uh, I love the church here as well and the church as well yes. yeah. and for you what would you tell people what is um, so special about Medjugorje even? So I think when you hear about Medjugorje first, I think the first thing that your mind goes into is doubt because you are, um, people don't know whether to believe about the sightings, about the kids seeing Mother Mary. And to all of them, I just tell you, come, come, Thank be at you. peace. Mm -hmm. And Mother Mary will get you there. Wow. It is a blessed place, I feel. You can feel the blessing in the surroundings. You don't have to see anything. You don't have to see miracles. You don't have to see any wonders. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sometimes you just come to the place because your faith brings you there. Mm -hmm. And if you believe, you will be here. Well, beautiful. Thank you so much for this beautiful, beautiful interview. Ah, and the favorite base for you here in Medjugorje? Oh, what? I think uh, yesterday Apparition Hill was really, really special uh -huh. um, because Really, I'm not the most healthiest person, but <laughs> climbing up really taught me that through all that pain, I would keep, continue to keep going. Uh -huh. And I did the whole trail and I came from the other end, almost got lost, but uh -huh. it was a good experience because I, I kept praying along the way and I was just like, you know, uh -huh. just keeping on saying the Hail Mary uh -huh. and then the Our Father. And I was like, okay, you know, I was here, I was meant to be here uh -huh. and uh, I was at peace. And today we are probably going to walk to the foot of the cross. So uh, the church is going at two o'clock. So I'm going to join to go group. on Cross Mountain. You're yes, going today. Cross Mountain. Beautiful two o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. So I look forward to that, and maybe I'll have many, many such experiences. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. And then with, for the for the viewers, Friday at two o'clock, the the parish goes up. No, there's yes. A, so uh, it goes at uh, two o'clock mm -hmm. at the bottom of the Cross Mountain. Sure. Yes, bottom yeah. of the Cross Mountain, and it's a journey, and you can go as pilgrims. Uh -huh. And for everybody who wants to go for an English mass, every morning 10 o'clock and on Sundays 12 p.m. Yep. Wonderful. Thank yeah. you so much for Thank this beautiful you. interview. Thank you.